How's it going everybody, Dato Doi here, and if you didn't know, about a week ago, Bandai Namco and Arc System Works decided to come together to release the first true pay-to-win character in Dragon Ball Fighters. Now I know, as someone that plays this game a lot, I probably should have protested, made a big fuss about it, but uh, I decided to spend the $5, and, and I gotta be honest, it was the best decision I ever made, it's been nothing but wins ever since. And while that may be good for my ranked points and the status of Goku GT as a character in this game, it does make it really hard to dedicate an entire video discussing whether or not he's worth playing. So let's just get it out of the way now. Should you play Goku GT? Yes, you should. The rest of this video is pretty much just going to be me gushing about how good this character is. So if you want to leave now, I, I fully understand. Let's go ahead and kick things off with this love letter to Goku GT by talking about the very tiny elephant in the room, that being Goku's size. Right away, you can probably tell that Goku GT is the smallest character that Fighters has ever seen, much smaller than the likes of Cell and even smaller than the likes of Krillin. Now instantly, this small size does come with some benefits, which includes small characters' ability to avoid fuzzies more than taller characters. Broly, for example, is getting hit on the way up, down, and then up again. So he's gotta be ready to block all of that, or he's gotta be ready to block another low. Cell has to deal with the same thing. Goku GT does not. Now, while that is nice, it really doesn't separate him from his other small character companions like Teen Gohan and Android 17. But a usually inherent downside of being this small is that your limbs are almost as small as you, thus you don't really have the best buttons in the game. Goku GT circumvents this by having a pole that goes across the screen and by choosing to fling himself across the screen a la Bardock. He also has a decent beam, a fantastic auto combo that allows you to switch sides, and for some reason his 2L moves him forward a little bit. Why'd you give this to Goku GT and not Android 17? Goku GT doesn't need this. Overall, what this basically means is that Goku GT has a lot of the benefits of being a crazy small character, including the fuzzy thing we talked about before, and just being a harder character to land conversions on and go into combos when they really matter, without some of the glaring downsides. Moving on to the next thing that makes Goku GT such a menace is just the fact that this character has so many mix-ups. Now, a lot of this is due to the fact that when you do a quarter circle back in any button, Goku will jump up and do this orb-like thing, and that gives him some good space. It also puts some block pressure on the opponent, but when you combine that with an assist, that leaves Goku in the air so that you can dash forward and go for an instant overhead, land and go for a low, or dash forward, fake an overhead, and just instantly go for a low. Basically, it's constant pressure that you really need to be paying attention to. Not to mention that if he makes you block again on the bottom, he can always do 2S on the ground to vault over you and then maybe end on that side and go for a low, or just come back on this side, throw out a beam, all sorts of stuff like that. The way I like to think about it is Goku GT's moveset is perfect for that online environment where there's like a couple frames of lag throwing off your opponent there is no way they're blocking some of this stuff it's just impossible goku gt is going to mix him up 10 out of 10 times another big part of his mix-up game also comes from his post level 3 oki which we'll go ahead and talk about now because that's pretty much my next point as to why goku gt is such a fantastic character and it's because he has the best level 3 in the game i said it hands down the best level 3 N no, not, not this one. This one actually isn't too good. Like I was saying, it's one of the best level threes in the... Ac no, this one isn't it either. Super Saiyan 4, it's, it's kind of the same thing as that last one. There you go, the Spirit Bomb. This is the best level three in the game, hands down. The Universal Spirit Bomb is busted as it is in its current state. And I would not be surprised if they took a look at it in future patches down the line. If they don't, hey, that's great. Goku players go crazy, but I would not be surprised if they do. So let's break down everything that this Spirit Bomb does. One, if somebody does recklessly super dash from you at a distance that you can safely react with it, this is a guaranteed punish. It'll eat up the super dash, punish them with the full spirit bomb, which afterwards you can go ahead and follow up with a combo if that's what you want to go ahead and do to make sure you pick up that kill. This is, of course, also a huge part in Goku GT's many touch of deaths. This character can do a touch of death combo with no sparking, sparking solo, sparking with teammates, no sparking with teammates. You name it, Goku GT has already taken somebody 100 to zero in that format. This spirit bomb is also super easy to land thanks to the use of Goku's fake out Kamehameha move to blast them up into your radius and go ahead and combo directly into it. Now, if that doesn't kill and you don't want to follow up with a touch of death, it also provides a hard knockdown in which it feels like you have 30 whole seconds to set up whatever kind of wake up scenario you want to. That is a ridiculous amount of setup time to decide 
outside what your opponent probably won't expect. And most of the times you're always going to land a hit after this. It, it's just impossible for the opponent to be ready for what's coming. This level three alone and the fact that you can go into it so easily already puts Goku GT above and beyond a lot of other characters in this game. And the fact that his kid around it is so stupid just makes it that much better. Oh man, I'm also running out of time to talk about all the other little things Goku GT does that's so good. Uh, how about his assist? When you snap out an opponent and use an assist, it has really weird properties that allows you to go for super easy and simple mix-ups that oftentimes will lead to your opponent getting hit, which may even allow you to get another snap out or end up knocking out their opponent's character completely. How about the fact that Goku can use 2S in the air to fall on his opponent with the power pole, allowing him to have some options even when above the opponent, which can allow him to vanish into a full combo. Also, let's not forget the fact that Goku GT has Shenron in his outro, which is very cool and bumps him up to S plus tier just on that alone. So yeah, all of that's to say Goku GT is a very amazing character and you should definitely look into getting him if you haven't. And if you do have him, uh, I hope you're enjoying the training mode with him because it is a blast playing this character. Uh, we should also be fair and talk about some of his negative points. Uh, I guess we could bring up the fact that his neutral isn't the greatest in the game. But again, when you're working with all these tools, I feel like having a mediocre something really isn't a negative at all. So I, I just gotta, I, I mean, you know what? I'm gonna cross that one off the list actually. But yeah, guys, in conclusion, should you play Goku GT? Yes. Should they nerf Goku GT? No. Guys, Arxis is gone. They, they might want to look into this character just a little bit. Maybe. I don't know. We'll have to let the dust settle and see how he does in tournament, but I don't know. It, it might be a problem. Let me know your thoughts on Goku GT down below in the comment section. Are you playing him? Are you enjoying him? Or are you not? While you're down there, if you like these videos and you like the channel, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. It really does help the channel out in more ways than I could ever say. I also have some more videos up on your screen if you need some more Dragon Ball Fighters slash fighting game content in your life right now. And if any of those interest you, just go ahead and give them a click and it should play from there. Other than that, I'm Dr. Doyle. Thank you so much for watching this specific video and I will see you in the next one.